welcome back to the Rangers News YouTube channel. My name is James Black and I'm joined again by Jordan Carlyle. James, good to be on. How you been, mate? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, interesting, you know, goals last night. Uh, so something, some sort of get excited by those ones are always a bit lacklustre. Uh, the Europa League ones uh, right at the start of the competition, you know, when you're expected to win. But... Um, yeah, big game at the weekend and uh, interested to see how it goes. Have a chat about it. Yeah, so speaking of that, after last night's 5 0 win over Lincoln Red in the Europa League, we're going to have a, a look at this weekend's game away to Hibs in the Scottish Premiership. Now, there's a couple of kind of big talking points coming out of last night's game and going into the Hibs game. And the first one's a kind of a fairly obvious one. I think Stephen Gerrard spoke about it a bit today at his press conference the goalkeeping position. We've got John McLaughlin's kept, what, six clean sheets in seven league games. We've got McGregor kept the seventh. Aye, uh, yeah. Both are fit, both look like they're ready to go. Who do you start? I think, I think you've got to go with McLaughlin at, at this point. As um, I think as Jared said before a couple of times, that uh, McGregor's got plenty of credit in the bank with him, um, which is, is totally fair because, you know, I think this... This team is an upgrade slightly on the teams he's had in the you know previous two seasons, but he's certainly bailed them out a lot of times since he's come back for a second stint. Uh, so I think, as he said today, you know he was very much planning for him to be his first choice. It hasn't worked out like that, and it's not really anyone's fault. It's a couple of niggling injuries, but the fact that McLaughlin still hasn't conceded in the in a in a competitive game for the club means that you know. But it's it's just not it's totally unreasonable uh, to consider bringing him out. I, I think it was good that McGregor got a run out um, in the game against uh, Lincoln Redams, and he and he could play in the next round. Uh, you know, you could easily see that next Thursday. But uh, I think for the league, you know, while this record's still in the cards, while the clean sheets keep coming, it's it's dangerous and, and just unnecessary to change it at this point. That, that's kind of where I am with it. For me, I, it has to be John McLaughlin. Whether he changes it in European games, I mean, we're going to Holland this time next week, we'll have played voluntary. But, yeah, that kind of game, I can absolutely see McGregor playing it with Easter Road. It has to be McLaughlin. I think it'd be really unfair, and it, it, it would surely be really demoralising for a goalkeeper. Regardless of knowing that you're number two, I think it would be quite harsh on him. Once he concedes, it might be a different question. Um, whether it's, it's a mistake or not, I could then see, you know, at least he, he's not got that, that kind of that little bit of credit there to go. Well, we've, we've still got clean sheets. We've not, I've not conceded anything yet. So yeah. In the club, and then I could maybe see a change. But just now, it, it has to be the one. And I think as well, if you're McGregor, it's it's hard for you to really complain about. The situation, I'm sure he doesn't actually really have any grievances. Look, he's a competitive guy. He's been at Rangers across two stints for a long time. And I'm sure he feels that he's probably the best keeper at the club. But having said that, I think he knows he's injured. And, and it's just unrealistic to expect to come back in, uh, to be pushing to come back in for a keeper who's done so well. So I think, um, you know, it's, it's pretty certain that uh, it'd be a big surprise, put it that way, if, if McLaughlin's not. Twin sticks on, on Sunday. I mean, a, another selection issue that you know, I say issue, but another selection dilemma that Gerard might have this weekend is up at the other end of the park. We saw Kemar Roof limp off against Lincoln Redams just before half time. Alfredo Morelos would ultimately kind of prove to be his replacement. Not right, Nathan Patterson was the one that came on initially, but kind of ultimately Morelos was the one that came on. Helped himself to two goals in Gibraltar. Gerard kind of hinted today that Roof, or right, there doesn't seem to be any kind of real injury, any long term injury at least. I'm not convinced that he's fit for this weekend. So do you, do you take the gamble? Do you go with Morello? Yeah, I think, you know, it's obviously from Rangers' point of view, it's good to get out there before a game against, against Hibs that, you know, Roof, your big sign in for the summer is fit. But I do find it hard to believe that a guy's taking himself off. From a game, I have to feel in something on a Thursday night, and we'll be ready to play three days later from the start. I just, I just don't really see that happening. He may be on the bench, he may not, but um, I think, I think in that instance, um, Morales has to start. You know, it's been difficult. He was so, so good last season, and and he went on a run 
Uh, I think, what well, was 16, 17 games, he'd only scored two goals for the club. Uh, obviously, he did very well last night, according to Jared. He's worked really hard um, over the international break when everyone else was away. He only had one day off. Um, and I, I think, you know, he, he's the guy who's proven. So we've got Itton, who got himself into some good positions without really finishing anything off last night. And a guy who's he's still yet to score for the club. But... You know, Morales has been there and done it against Hibbs, home and away, uh, in the past. And this is a ground that, that Jared has struggled at since he's come to the club, struggled to get results. So well, I think he needs to go with his, his best team. And that, that may actually be it and Roof, and or sorry, it and Anne Morales, um, due to the fact that guys like Brandon Barker and Jordan Jones hasn't played for a while. Greg Stewart played in the Europa League game, but he is still sort of a fringe player. Um, so it's interesting to see how he's going to get that balance. You know, no Joe Rebo either. Um, so he might play both it and the Morales, but I can't see Roof starting. And in that case, Morales has to play. One of the concerns a few fans seemed to have on Twitter last night was uh, with Roof picking up a calf injury. He spent a lot of time out last season with a calf injury. I mean, yeah. there, there was kind of one or two little grumbles when he signed that he may or may not be a bit injury prone. Is that something that you think is going to kind of play in the mind a little bit going into this Hibs game? You know, with it being so close in the back end. Not just playing a European game on the Thursday, but also the travel involved on top of that. And it has been a fairly hectic schedule to start the season. Yeah, well, I think Leeds fans, there were Leeds fans sort of talking about the fact that he, you know, he fairly regularly missed games for them, a little muscle niggles, and obviously had a more serious injury um, at Anderlecht before he signed for Rangers. And... But I think for anyone, it doesn't matter whether you've had calf problems or not. I think if you feel a twinge on the Thursday night, you're just not going to be in the mindset to play and, and be at 100% sprinting after every ball three days later. I just think it's unrealistic. So I, I think you know the thing is that Rangers do have some options to use despite all the injuries, which is, you know, I think in the past would not be the case. Um the Rangers do have some options, so they should use it. And, you know, they don't need uh, Roof to start this game. Uh, you know, they can win it with other players and there's no need to take a risk on or any player who, who have been in a similar position. Now, we touched on that a little bit earlier on. I just kind of want to discuss the, the ongoing clean sheet record. I mean, it's, it's been a fantastic start to the season defensively. Do you think that can be extended this weekend at Hibs? And do you think there's a, a, a real chance that the, the world record, which I think we need to get a clean sheet up to and including the old firm next month, is it a possibility? I, I think it is. You can't really rule it out after seven in a row in the league. Um, it, it's been brilliant so far, and it's been brilliant with a bit of chop and change in that centre back as well, with Holander and Balogun. I think Edmonton had, you know, a mistake yesterday that nearly cost the goal, and you know, there's there's no ju- there's no doubt at the minute that he's sort of down the pecking order a little bit, and that was more of a run out than a you know than a change in plan. But uh, I think they certainly can at Easter Road. I think Hibs are a dangerous team and are the best team that Rangers have played so far this season. Uh, the results show that, and I think. You know, um, Samarin had a bit of a you know a shambolic situation last weekend with the goalkeeper. Um, you know, the goalkeepers being out and having to bring in the emergency loan, which didn't help them. But Hibs look very positive there. Uh, you know, when they play with two strikers, they play with Doidge and Nisbet, who obviously Rangers, um, you know, allegedly were scouting at one stage last year. I think it's easy to see why that. I think the club been reluctant to buy players based on success in lower leagues but I think he's a powerful guy he's got a good touch on him good with his head and knows what the goal is um, and Dodge did well last year I, I, th- I think Scott, Al- Scott Allen's missing the game yeah yeah. Um, Scott Allen Jamie Murphy's out as well also because she's on loan there I mean yeah. it's, it's going to be there's two fairly big players for him that are going to be missing for this one uh, I mean, yeah and I've just uh, the lost the player as well um, he went down to Wickham recently oh yeah yeah uh, Horgan. Horgan, yes. Uh, you know, so that's three guys who are obviously going to look to affect the play in the final third. Uh, but they've got two good strikers. Uh, whether they play or not, or whether he, you know he goes slightly more defensive remains to be seen. But 
it'll be the biggest test uh, for the back four, I think, of the season. But, you know, the confidence couldn't be any higher, whether it's the keeper or the defenders themselves. And then, um, you know, with a couple, of, a couple of midfielders are coming into form in front of them, um, providing a bit of a, you know, a safety net. I, I think there's every chance that they keep it going. Um, but, yeah, as I say, it'll be the toughest test so far, I think. The, it's going to be a, a real challenge for us this weekend. I think, but I, I do think that a, a really good chance for us to take three points here. We know credit to Hibs. Hibs have had a really good start to the season, but yeah, I just think I think Rangers should be too strong. So just before we wrap this up, just kind of two quick last ones for you. First of all, what's your score prediction for Saturday? Uh, Sunday, sorry. Uh, I, I think it will be tight. So. I was thinking before that, you know, outside of the clean sheet record, I've just said that Rangers may keep. I was thinking 2-1. I think um, it, it does have to come to an end at some point. I, I can I can also say a 2-0, a 1-0, a really tight game, as as they've tended to be since Jared's been at Rangers. It's not so much that they go to Easter Road and they're, and they're on the end of a beating. It's the fact that they can't score and can't break them down. Um, but I think I'll go 2-1. Two, 2-1 one. Two, one, Put my neck in the lingo too now. I think the, the clean sheet record lives to fight another day. Step closer to that world record. Now, just finally, I just I want to just talk you through. Put a predicted eleven up on the site earlier on tonight. Yeah. So just kind of want to talk you through it. See if you agree, disagree with any of the selections and okay. kind of what changes you go for. So it should be coming up on the screen just now. But um, so we've got John McLaughlin in goals, Tavernier, Helander. Goals and Barisic, Davis and Kamara, Haji Kana as a 10, Kent, Morelos, and Cedric Itton. Yeah, I think, um, the change or? Uh, no, I think that's exactly how it would go. Um, I think that's the best use of the resources at the minute. Obviously, there's there's guys that would probably start in there. Certainly, Arebo, Roof, if you're looking at your strongest team, Ryan Jack. Um, but you know, as I sort of said there earlier, I think guys like Kent, or sorry, guys like Kent have obviously really impressed. But Stephen Davis and, and Glenn Kamara have really upped it a little bit. Um, sort of in recent weeks, they them coming in for Arfield makes sense. He's had a couple of runouts, um, you know, at the weekend and in Gibraltar. Helander coming back in, you know, but I think Jared said that Balogun is likely to be fit. Again, that's one where there's no need to take the risk. And I think in a physical game, like, uh, you know, in a, in a difficult away game at Easter Road, I think he's always likely to go for Hollander anyway. Uh, I think, yeah, it still plays, but you, you need the guaranteed, you know, the, the guy's been there and done it before in Morelos. So uh, it's a big game for someone like Hadji because, um, you know, he started to come into it a little bit more recently after a slow start. Uh, but you know, you, you, you do get the, the feeling sometimes he's a little bit more com- comfortable at Ibrox when he has the space and, and stuff to roam. That may not necessarily be the case at, at, uh, at Easter Road, but uh, I think that's the strongest team Rangers have and the team that's definitely capable of going there and getting the three points. I think that's fantastic. Well, that's enough for this episode. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. You can have a look back through all, all our older videos as well. And we'll have plenty of coverage coming up on the site from all the news from Ibrox and of course that weekend's game at Hibs.